This is Steve with the Mr. Big Kid channel and thank you all so much for watching. It's been almost three months since I purchased the Masterbuilt 560 Gravity Series Digital Charcoal Smoker. So I've smoked briskets, I've smoked pork shoulders, I've smoked pork belly, I've reverse seared steaks, I've cooked chicken, chicken thighs, uh, homemade buffalo wings. I've done a lot of different stuff on this charcoal grill. Now, it's a really neat grill, so I'm gonna start by saying that, but I'm just gonna talk about some of the good and the bad that I've experienced with the grill so far. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Mr. Big Kid is all about firearms and barbecue. I love those, and that's really what the channel is about. I do an occasional family vlog, but I'm actually thinking of starting to limit that only to Patreon supporters, just because it doesn't really go with the theme of my channel, but I love doing those videos anyways. So if you haven't checked me out on Patreon, definitely check me out if you don't mind. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about this grill. For starters, just in case you guys are curious, I am just doing some steaks and potatoes real quick, so I'll show you what I got. I got some of these little stewed potatoes um, with some garlic and all that. And then I have some steaks on here that I'm actually reverse searing. So I'm gonna close this so I don't lose my progress. Let's talk about some of the goods and bads about the Masterbuilt Gravity Grill. One awesome, awesome feature is the PID controller. This thing hones in the temperature to no more than a five degree swing up or down, which is fantastic. It holds such good temperatures. If you set it to 225, it's gonna maintain between 225, 226, 227, maybe 222. Once in a while you might get a little spike, but that spike is never more than a five degree swing up or down. It's, it's awesome. One thing that was absolutely concerning to me when I purchased this grill was how light the grill is in general and how light the door is. It's, it weighs nothing and you think, is that a quality issue or what? I will tell you one thing, this thing gets wicked hot. I'm talking 700 degrees hot and this thing doesn't it won't sear. It, it, this thing doesn't hurt to touch. I mean, yes, it gets it's hot, so you can't hold it there. But it's nothing like an actual door on a different kind of grill. So the materials might be lighter, but they do a really good job of insulating. I've actually rested cutting boards on top of here while I'm searing something, while I'm cooking something. It's a really cool feature, actually. And maybe just with modern technology, as technology is increasing, materials are getting lighter. Let's talk about the hopper now. So the difference between this and a pellet grill, aside from the fuel, you know, a pellet grill obviously using wood pellets, this uses charcoal. The difference is you actually have a fire inside the hopper. So the charcoal, this whole hopper is full, right? And you have a fire right down here. This is what's burning. That there's a fan that directs that heat and smoke into the grill chamber and that fan also modulates the, the temperature. The fan is incredibly quiet. Just listen. That fan is actually running right now. And that's, <laughs> that's super quiet. The pellet grill has a very noisy fan. This thing is very quiet. It's a small fan. It doesn't need much. Charcoal gets extremely hot. So if you need to load new charcoal, you just open up this hatch right here. And then this is where all the charcoal is. You can see it's actually burning inside there. Oh, can't really get it. There we go, there's a the focus. It's actually burning inside there. A whole hopper of charcoal can last me about nine to 10 hours of cooking. And almost a whole bag of charcoal will fit inside this thing. So it's not extremely efficient, but it, it does work well. And then of course, down here, you have your ash pan and then you can actually see where all that charcoal is burning up top. So that's, that's your heat source, that's where it's coming in. So one way that this actually conserves charcoal is you would think when you're done cooking, it's just gonna kill the entire hopper of charcoal. Not the case, you have two of these sliders and they actually go one up here, it slides all the way in, and then one down here and that slides all the way in as well. That starves the oxygen for the charcoal to combust. And it actually puts out the heat pretty quick and it conserves charcoal. 
I've actually, this is my same hopper for three quick cooks. Another thing is the grill chamber size. The grates aren't huge. So that's a beef I have. They do make a larger model, but you do have a very tall grill chamber right here. So I have all my steaks. I mean, I got three New York, I got four New York strips and two T-bones down there. But up here, I also have a rack and I got my potatoes going. So now I'm gonna talk about some of the negatives that I've experienced with the grill as well. As much as I like this grill, there are certain things that just, I wish would be a little bit different. So let's talk about those two. Now this is something I don't know if I can necessarily fault the grill design for, but one thing is there is no chimney on this grill. So even for smoking, if you look back here, that's inside the grill chamber. So that's wide open. Not a huge deal because it does a good job. So I can't say it's a design flaw. However, I wish there was some kind of chimney so I can help control the output of the smoke as well. I guess in the end, the pellet grill has a chimney that you can't adjust either, so. And the most difficult thing with this grill, I'll open it again. So down there, you have like a little house where the heat is kind of like uh, forced through. And yes, you can get an open flame on this grill. But the problem is, it's hard to get that open flame. You can set it to 700 degrees, open up the grill, and you can feel that heat just billowing out. But if you're looking for a sear on a steak, a direct flame burning sear, which I love having that direct flame touching my meat. <laughs> that sounds weird. It's hard to get that consistently with this. I've done it, and it comes out great when I get that big scorching sear on it, but it's, for some reason, it's hard to actually produce a flame on this grill. Like I said, it can be done, but it's not easy. I guess the last beef that I have with this grill is you have to ignite your own fire on the grill. That's not a huge deal, but when you're talking about using fans for technology and temp setting a temperature and all that, using technology, having some kind of like a propane burner or some kind of ignition source to light those charcoals initially would be nice. Now it's not hard to light. You can light it with a fire brick. I just hold a torch to it for like 15 seconds and then I turn it on and it works. But that's maybe a feature that would be kind of cool. Just being able to turn it on just like a pellet grill and then it ignites itself and gets up to its own temperature. That would be pretty cool. So one really cool feature about this is it is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capable. I've actually never used the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi on it. I just, it's fine. I'm sure it's really cool and I'm gonna try it eventually, but for now, I just kind of like using it with a control panel right here. You have four temperature inputs, which is really nice. You can set a timer. Um, this is a Wi-Fi thing. I don't know what it actually does, but um, you can set your temps right here with this button. So you hit that button, you turn your dial to change your temps, or you can hit this button and it can scroll through the different temp readings. We are at 743 degrees internal right now, but no open flame. It's ultra hot. I don't doubt it's 700 degrees, but we don't have an actual flame. Let's see if we can get one produced though. We might need some steak grease to do that. Well, that's it guys. That's the grill for you. I've had it, like I said, almost for three months now and I've been really enjoying owning it. It's a really cool grill. I grew up using a Weber kettle grill. My family, when I was a kid, we always used a Weber. My dad taught me, taught me how to make, you know, charcoal pyramid to light it. I would always light the grill for him. I love that flavor of charcoal, especially the Kingsford briquettes. Um, so I love that charcoal flavor on food. Having this grill, it gives you the convenience of a pellet grill, kind of, except you have to light it yourself. Um, but it gives you that temperature control and it gives you that charcoal flavor because it's using combusting charcoal to cook your food, just like a charcoal, a Weber kettle, whatever. Um, you can add wood chunks to it and wood chips and that'll actually help smoke. You can, you can set that temp down to the 100s, the high 100s, which is awesome or you can go as high as 700 degrees for a really hot, wicked hot sear. I love this grill. It's worked out great for me so far. I hope you all found this video interesting. And if you're thinking about getting this grill, I do recommend it. Grease fires are absolutely possible with it. I had one a couple weeks ago when I fired it up. I was doing the peanut butter steak and this thing absolutely just went ablaze. So, um, 
keep it clean. Keep your drain pan clean. Keep your your crap catcher on the bottom clean and just try to keep, if you do like cheeseburgers or something really greasy, it builds up fast and that can really catch fire quick, especially when you do these really hot sears. It gets a little out of control. So be careful with that. But that 700 degree sear is wicked awesome. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification icon so you know when I'm making new content. Mr. Big Kid is all about firearms and barbecue. That's what I love to do. And you might notice some weeks are gun videos and some weeks are barbecue videos. Those are my two favorite things. And that's what I love making videos about. Hope you all enjoy it. I will see you guys later. Have an amazing week. Bye.